Imagine yourself a few years from now. You've worked hard, achieved some of your dreams. You've got friends, good family, vacations, a happy life. And then it happens. Just when you should be able to sit back and relax a bit, you start to feel an intense pressure building in your chest, and it's hard to breathe. As suddenly as that, you can lose it all to a heart attack or cancer, or imagine a stroke that leaves you paralyzed in a wheelchair and drooling out the side of your mouth. But your plan was a long, happy retirement with golf or travel, not an early death or chemotherapy. What went wrong? Well, positive thinking people prefer not to think of it, but those potential destinies are out there waiting for you. These ideas are uncomfortable, but right along with being extremely happy or successful or make a lot of money, you need to have a detailed plan for your health and longevity. Otherwise, you're just gambling you're ever going to reach a happy retirement. Do you know there are a few remaining cultures where people commonly live to be 90 and 100 years old and they're healthy. The diseases we fear with aging don't necessarily need to start when we're 50-something years old. And the simple key is in reducing unhealthy behaviors and lowering your risk. But how? How do we change? Well, making a list and setting goals is essential, and we'll get to that in a minute. But we think changing behavior has to be difficult. Actually, it's easy to do, and I'll show you. However, it is one of the most difficult things to maintain. I want to give you some new ways to think, some motivation, some inspiration, even a little bit of medical education. But let's not just make another to-do list. We also need to change ourselves a bit and love the idea of a healthy lifestyle. And not just for another 30-day plan. Think of this being for the next 30 years. Now, I believe in this because my own past 30 years has been spent as an emergency physician. And I love my job. But sadly, so much of what I treat is preventable. Each day at work, I see lives tragically change. Uh, a bad injury, a heart attack, a new diagnosis of cancer. It teaches you to enjoy every day, but also to protect your health. Now, a few years ago, I did an emergency room project to help cigarette smokers quit during the critical time phase when they're near death from a heart attack or difficulty breathing. Those hours can be an extremely motivating time to end the smoking habit. And everyone magically becomes a great listener. I call it the near-death experience, which I'll demonstrate for you. I've seen it work many times. The alternative, of course, is the real-death experience, which I do not recommend. <laughs> now, I'd like you to join me, if you will, just for a few minutes to close your eyes and experience a different type of visualization. And I want you to try this later tonight in more detail. But right now, just everybody close your eyes, take a deep breath, and imagine yourself a few years from now lying in an emergency room bed having a big heart attack. Now add some vivid details and try and make it seem real. You hear a heart monitor beeping in the background. Your nurse looks worried. Nearby, there's a family member saying a silent prayer for you. And you feel like you've just climbed up six flights, can't get enough air. You're sweaty, your heart is racing. You've got intense pain. And you are perhaps as frightened as you've ever been. You think, I can just get through this. I'll quit. I'll change. Or please, God, help me. I don't want to die. And then you hear, we're going to get you through this, but you need to decide. Commit right now to end the bad habits that brought you to this crisis, whether it's 
obesity, lack of exercise, smoking, cocaine use, or poor control of your blood pressure or diabetes. Next week you'll realize, boy, that was a close one. Scared me to death. But right now, promise yourself. No, guarantee yourself that behavior is over. Now, open your eyes. I call this the motivational moment. In times of absolute crisis, it's actually easy to motivate and change behavior. Now ask yourself, why do I need to wait for that near-death experience? It's just a thousand times better to make the changes years ahead of the crisis. Guess how many times a year I have a newly diagnosed lung cancer or heart attack patient who's able to quit smoking? Congratulations, my friend, but I'm also thinking, too bad you didn't do it five years earlier. So let's start. Draft it on paper today and in detail tonight. Make your list. You need to do it. Set a goal, make a plan, and incorporate health and fitness in the rest of your life. But don't think of it as changing behavior. Instead, begin a new project. Just as if it's a hobby or a challenge, it's a good thing. It doesn't need to be painful. And you can make it long-lasting. And let's start with exercise. And I know some of you will instantly groan. And how many of you have no plans to do any exercise at all this week? If you don't enjoy exercise, you need to change your perspective. Make it fun. Use sports, hiking, dancing, music. Have a partner, get a personal trainer, multitask, and watch TV if you want. But you must invest time in being physically fit. And what if you say, I don't have the time? Then start with just 10 minutes, three times a week, and make the habit simple. Is there anyone out there who can honestly say they don't have 10 minutes available three times a week? Anyone? We need physical fitness. Here's a 24-hour fitness club with up and down escalators to make you smile. <laughs> Only in America. But I wonder how many of you might actually choose those escalators? All right, next on your health list, put down the top three issues specific to you. Maybe you've tried for years and given up. If you know you need to change it, then put it down. This is your life we're talking about. Is it your weight? Obesity, and now childhood obesity, it's a preventable epidemic. What should you model for your family to follow? Show them how it's done. What percent of your diet is fruits and vegetables, and is your kitchen full of fat and sugar and low-quality foods? Here's the Wiener Stockade Roast, yum, with extra bacon on it for flavor. Now, it's easy to find meals like this with two days worth of fat in them. And for some of you with just mild obesity, sometimes the starting secret is quite simply just eat less and less junk and begin every meal with a full glass of water to help fill the stomach and decrease your hunger sensation. Now, just for a bit of fun, let's see with a show of hands who out there has a little problem with loving chocolate? Everybody? All right. How about too much alcohol? OK. OK, good. Uh, no, not, not good. Uh, all right, questions get a little more difficult now. How about dangerous sexual behavior? All right, well, <laughs> there's honesty. The rest of you just not getting enough sex, I guess. Uh, do you miss out on joy in life because of depression or grief or family problems? And do you need perhaps to get professional help? Now, some of you are still smoking cigarettes and wish you didn't. And then there's cancer. Now, look around you right now because one out of five of us will die with some form of cancer. Hug. Well, you can reduce your risk of cancer with diet and fitness, and we need to worry about environmental pollution. Some cancers can be detected at an early curable stage, so 
Breast exams, rectal exams, they're simple, effective, and frequently ignored. And if you have hypertension or diabetes, are you compliant with the lifestyle changes and medications? And if you have a problem with alcohol or an addiction, I don't want to minimize the difficulty in, in quitting, but you definitely need to replace it with something. Meditation, religion, new purpose in life, or professional help. Now, some of you will be driving home today distracted by those cell phones. Or perhaps you just drive too fast or after alcohol. And parents, make your children wear bicycle helmets. Oh, I've seen some terrible lifelong brain injuries that shouldn't have happened. And back pain prevention. In the emergency room, we see a lot of back pain often accompanied by depression, pain pill dependence. So what can you do now? Of course, weight reduction and fitness. Think about your posture and lifting correctly. And how are you sitting in your chair right now? So choose the health issues that are important to you. And then discover your motivational power. Take some time tonight and really think about why you want to change. Example. Maybe lung cancer and smoking is just not meaningful to you when you're young. Instead, annoying your friends or bad breath or the money you waste is motivating. Also, love the idea of a healthy, long life by planning your future and the type of person you want to be for the rest of your life. Yes, inspire yourself. It's powerful. OK, so let's say you've made the changes. How do you keep it going long term? Well, sometimes we're impressive. With the right inspiration, we can just flip a switch in our brain and make permanent changes. Maybe it will happen to you. Maybe you are ready for an amazing change. But don't get upset if it doesn't happen that way. Don't give up on your plan if it doesn't work immediately or if you fall back into old habits. It's OK. Use the near-death experience concept and really Visualize yourself lying in an emergency room bed or getting chemotherapy. Feel the sadness of a preventable disease. Many people permanently change after they realize they almost died. But many people don't. We get lazy. We'll begin again. And this is important. Most people need repeated attempts before they make permanent changes. That's just the way it is. You need effort and persistence. Health, if you are blessed in having it, is a gift. And it's your responsibility to maintain it. No one's going to do it for you until after you get sick. Then we'll give you lots of pills and therapy. So how does all this relate to unhealthy stress and emotions? Well, Unhealthy stress weakens your immune system and ability to heal. But once your body adjusts to doing regular exercise, you will definitely handle stress better, have more energy, and sleep better. And stress is also helped by meditation and prayer. And so is heart, intestinal, arthritis, cancer. If you're too stressed, put it on your list and try it. Now, we all have our own unique abilities to handle stress. In the emergency room, we deal with stress every day. Ugly sights, listening to pain, and, and some really bad smells. And rapid life and death decisions, that's our routine. But deeply destructive stress, that can happen to any of us. So continue learning how to manage your stress, because wherever you are in life's journey, and I hope it's wonderful. But you need to mentally prepare yourself for an occasional disaster. But at the same time, you want to be having more optimistic thoughts in life, not pessimistic. How you look at life is a choice. Be hopeful. And you can choose to look at other people in a positive way. You'll be a happier person, less stress. People enjoy being around you more. and. You will be more successful at maintaining these new and healthier life habits. And finally, somewhere on your health list, some of us, 
Yes, need to put down love and giving to others. Love and giving helps your immune system, helps depression, and it helps other people. So think about where in your life you want to love more. Now, is it at your job? Love just being healthy. And love the people and family around you. Your relationships are precious. Honor them. And repair damage when you see it. Now, we can all benefit from this. Share it with a friend who needs motivation. But now, today, make a healthy life plan that you want in your future. Do you need to change everything overnight? No, of course not. But change your direction today, away from that preventable heart attack, and lower your risk of cancer, and be healthy and happy and energetic and optimistically looking forward to every year. Yes, get started. You can really do this. Thank you very much.